if you guys, if we go and take a look at this problem, um, again, if we want to identify the domain or range, domain's easy, right? We look at our restrictions. Is there any restrictions? Are we, can we divide by a zero? Yeah. No, we can't divide by zero, right? There's no fraction bar to and have a variable in the denominator. Can we take the square root of a negative number? No, right? There's no restrictions. So our domain is pretty simple to identify here. May infinity to infinity. To find the range, though, we need to find the inverse. So swap, um, swap our variables, and then we go ahead and solve. So to solve for y, I'll subtract 2. Subtract the 2. x minus 2 equals y squared. To undo the square, to undo squaring, I will introduce the square root. Notice how I'm saying introduce the square root, because whenever I say introduce the square root, you should always think plus or minus. Whenever you introduce the square root, we have to make sure we're including plus or minus. So therefore, y equals positive square root of, I'm sorry. So therefore, all right, so there's y. And now we can, instead of placing y with f inverse, we're not talking about function, uh, function notation. We can just think of that as y inverse like that. So we can replace y instead of with f inverse of x, we can replace it with y inverse. So square root of x minus 2. And, or we could say y inverse equals negative square root of x minus 2. So there's two of them, which is very important for us to understand here. Okay, and we'll come to that in a second. The next thing I'd like you guys to think about is, again, all right, so now we need to find the domain of this. Because if we can find the domain of these two functions, that's the range of my original function. Well, do you, do you guys agree with me? These two functions are exactly the same, except one has a vertical reflection, right? Vertical reflection is not going to affect the domain. The only thing that's affecting the domain is x minus 2 has to be greater than or equal to 0. So we go ahead and solve x is greater than or equal to 2. So my domain is for all values that are greater than 2. 2 included to infinity. That's my domain of my inverse function. That means that's the range of my inverse function. I'm sorry, the range of my inverse function. OK? Any questions on that? All right, let's graphically take a look at that. 